hello there thank you so much for stopping by again today on my channel on this week's episode of midweek standpoint we're going to be talking vital questions to ask regarding parenting before marriage marriage <laughs> Before I go ahead, let me apologize for any background noises you might encounter during the course of this video. I'm really sorry, it's due to circumstances beyond my control. So kindly bear with me and try to concentrate on the value I'm trying to pass across. Thank you. So like I said, we're talking marriage today. Marriage, marriage, marriage. Some people dread it, some people look forward to it, some people shy away from it, some people have made a decision to never get into it. <laughs> and all of these reactions stem from what is obtainable in our society today. But let me just tell you something, something that is true. Marriage is a beautiful thing when you do it to the right person. And despite the fact that we have so many case cases of failed marriages, dysfunctional marriages. It doesn't take away the fact that marriage is an institution set up by God. And you know that anything that comes from God is beautiful. Another fact is that there are beautiful marriages to look up to. But the thing is, would I say due to the advent of social media, it looks like all we see on our screens are cases of failed marriages. But that is not the point of today's discussion. The first important discussion should be about faith. You know how the Bible says, do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. What that means is not, oh, segregate or don't have anything to do with them or outrightly disassociate yourself. No, of course, that is not what Jesus preached. If you're conversant with his work on earth and his ministry, you can see that he mingled with even people that were far away from having a relationship with God, right? But for an institution like marriage, I think it's very important to be on the same page when it comes to, for instance, being a believer in Christ Jesus. So essentially, if you're a Christian, your partner should also be a Christian. Your partner should believe in Jesus, believe that he died on the cross and he has given us salvation. And also, your partner should believe in the Holy Spirit. It's very important. It really sets the precedence for everything else as far as being a Christian is concerned. Next thing you should be discussing is if you both want kids. Because like it or not, some people don't want kids. Some people don't want to reproduce. So you have to be on the same page regarding this. I've had instances where a husband and a father literally detested his kids. Like he didn't want to ever cite them. And of course, that's a very huge issue in a marriage. And it could go both ways, right? I've also had ladies say they never want to have kids. Like they have decided that they don't want kids. So imagine going into a union with somebody like that. While you, on the other hand, would love to have kids, despite the fact that they could be a handful, you don't mind, you want your generation to keep transcending and growing and all of that, you're definitely not on the same page and so it is something vital. Then of course, when you have agreed that you both want kids, the next thing is to agree on how many kids you actually would want to have. For instance, if you want two kids and your partner wants four kids, you can come to a common ground of, you know, settling for three kids. But if the fourth one enters, shall no wahala. <laughs> but you get my point, like try to agree on how many kids you will eventually have and also how strongly your partner is holding on to the number of kids they want. If they are willing to be flexible about it or not it's really important another topic of discussion should be what kind of values would you like to instill in your kids and i think this takes us back to the first point of your faith it is a very huge determinant of the kind of values you know you would want to instill in your kids you know a good christian person would definitely want to pass down christian values to their kids and if you're married to somebody who doesn't share those values, it's going to be a problem. So you see the point. So now, like I said, let's say you have established a common ground regarding your faith, right? Discuss the kind of values you'd want to instill in your kids. It just helps to be on the same page, faith-wise, be on the same page on everything. It will help so that you always be in sync when you're dealing with the kids and shaping them up in their formative years, right? A follow-up should also be how you want to discipline your kids. People have different perspectives when it comes to discipline. 
one person might believe in spanking the other person might believe in taking out taking away devices someone might believe that oh kids should have a cell phone as soon as they are 10 years old mm -hmm. the other believes you don't deserve a cell phone until you're ready for college or university so try discussing these things and reaching a common ground another very important question you should be asking your significant other to be is how would you react if any of your kids begin to question their gender or sexuality this is a very important question in the world we live in right now so you need to know that you are a force with the person you're getting into marriage with so that if that kind of challenge presents itself you will know how to handle it because if you are pro natural sexuality natural gender and you're with somebody who has a problem with that and doesn't mind you know being flexible oh let them live their lives that is a big problem it's funny how most of these things take us back to the first point of faith if you're conversant with where the bible stands regarding sexuality and you know the gender of a human being and both of you are on the same page you definitely are already a force you know and you make similar decisions you take similar actions you react similarly if that kind of challenge presents itself with any of your children so speaking about the education of kids um it's good to ask if your partner believes in homeschooling and also if they prefer public or private schools what they think about boarding houses or day school is your partner the kind that does not mind shipping off a child to boarding house just to breathe a little or they're the ones that want to always know everything going on in the child's life these are very important points. For instance, I do not believe in boarding schools. I lived in the boarding school from SS2 to my final year in secondary school. And um, the experience was not so pleasant for me. I don't believe that boarding schools will help them be more independent. I don't believe it. You can train your kids at home to be independent. You don't need to ship them off to a particular place for them to gain independence. So yeah is a no-no for me so that's that's just an example another important question you should be asking your significant other is how involved they want the grandparents to be in the lives of the children can you take them over can grandparents come and live in to take care of them would you trust the grandparents wholeheartedly in the culture i come from grandparents are really really involved at least 90 percent of the time in the lives of their grandchildren i feel like they're even the most trusted people apart from the actual parents to take care of the children so this is the question that you should ask because some people might not agree some people might not want any third party in the, in the raising of your children so make sure you're on the same page regarding this at least come to a common agreement or reach a common decision speaking of decisions also ask your partner how you both are supposed to handle parental decision making i feel like one way to handle this is having a meeting together on how to handle a particular bad behavior and reaching a, a decision before speaking to the child about it or applying any action you have agreed to do to apply regarding the situation because when mommy is saying a and daddy is saying b one person becomes the bad guy i don't think that's really okay i'm not saying both of you must be strict when you look at it sometimes one parent is always the stricter one that's fine but when it comes to actually taking action regarding a particular matter it's important that both of you make a common decision and reach an agreement regarding the actions you need to take about that particular situation and with that we've come to the end of today's episode of midweek standpoint let me know if you love this kind of content in the comment section because I intend to bring more of this kind of content your way. We'll be talking Christian marriages, how to be a Christian spouse, what to look out for, your expectation, your reality, what God says about certain situations in marriage, and everything Christian marriage. And of course, Christian courtship as well, leading up to a Christian marriage. So if you love this kind of content, please let me know and leave your comments in the comment section about the points that i raised and what you think about them i'll see you very soon thank you so much for sticking with me i do not take it for granted bye for now see you soon Toodles.